What's up everybody? We have another Nomad Sculpt video for you today. This is how to use images three different ways in Nomad Sculpt to help you with your sculpting. Um, if you guys like this type of content, please leave a like on the video so I know to be making some more. I think I'm going to be making a small series called Nomad Basics, but if you guys have any suggestions, leave them in the comments below. And let's get to the video and hope this helps you guys. So first off, number one, what do you always need? reference images. To get to that, you go into your backgrounds menu and right uh, on the second tier, you're going to see reference images right there. There's a checkbox that you can just turn it on and uh, turn it off if you want to. As you can see, I already have tons of reference images inside of my Nomad Sculpt uh, program. There's a bunch of different options and settings, but uh, if you want to add any of your images that you need in there, you just hit the plus icon and it brings you up to either choosing through photos or files, depending where you have them stored. So go inside, select what folder you have. I'm picking a silly portrait of myself that me and my family were doing one day when we were just having fun taking uh, funny faced portraits of ourselves. So that was me just acting a little goofy with my daughters and my fiance. But anyways, this is an awesome option for you to be able to um, use as references uh, to help you sculpt, to help you build out basic shapes and everything. If you look below, there's even uh, some options that you can do. You can move it around, you can scale it, you can change the overlay if it's in front or behind the object, or kind of a mixture of both right in between. You can also change the opacity of your image too with the alpha slider. So it's really useful, like I said again, um, just to help you guys build out your, your models or have just a, a piece of artwork or concept that you're following right there on screen with you. Um, Either way, there's multiple other ways to get reference images or use them during sculpting, but I think this is a quick, simple way, and I think it's a great idea to have and use when you are sculpting if you have any artwork that you can use to sculpt with. Number two, World Lighting HDR Maps. So I've talked about this website before. It is HDR, hdrihaven.com. Um, it is a free HDRI map um, website that you can go to and download some that you can install into Nomad Sculpt. Um, there's other resources out there, but this is the one that I always go to first to check out and use in my scenes. Um, it's pretty great. There's tons of options in here to use and to pull from. All you have to do is go to the HDRs, pick out the section that you want to pick out from. So we're going to pick an indoor. Um, I'm going to pick one that I don't have yet because I've already installed a few in my Nomad Sculpt. I want you, you'll guys see it in a minute. So you go pick on the one that you like and you pick the resolution that you want. We're just going to use 2K in this situation. So let's click on 2K and from there download it. And when you get back into Nomad Sculpt after downloading it, you are going to open up your shadings menu. Or shading, not shadings, but your shading menu. And that is going to ask between PBR and matte caps. You want to make sure you are in PBR so that it works. So. Um, now we are in PBR and you can see the environment map or the HDR map. I have a few ex extra in there that you guys probably don't have because I've already installed a few. But if you want to add another, just like adding references, you click the plus button or the plus icon and that'll bring you to selecting what your file is at. So let's go to our downloads. You'll see the HDR map uh, Peppermint Power Plant and that'll pop right in and it changes your world lighting for you. HDR eyes do not give you like full on shadows, but it's a good base lighting for your scene to have. So now with the new lighting system inside of Nomad Sculpt, you can really get a nice render. I mean, surprisingly on the iPad. Um, but yeah, that's number two using uh, HDR maps and um, understanding how powerful they are to make your sculpts and renders look uh, really nice inside of Nomad Sculpt. Give you some good beauty renders in here straight out of the iPad. It's great. And last but not least, number three, detailing models using alpha maps. So we are here on the Pixelogic website and they have a great alpha resource library. I mean, you can really use any black and white image um, to use, do as a stamp or anything like that, but uh, ZBrush or Pixelogic has a very vast library. Uh, so we're gonna go into the skin section and just pick something out, out of the skins to use on um, the simple model inside of Nomad Sculpt on the sphere. Um, so once you go ahead and decide which one you want and you download it, it is going to come into a zip file. Go ahead in your downloads folder and unzip it or uncompress it. It'll pull out the, um, the alpha map for you. So 
Now that we're in Nomad Sculpt, we are going to go into our Stroke Options menu after selecting the brush that we want to use because we can use this on any brush that allows us to um, draw on or sculpt on the model. In this case, we're using the regular brush. So we're going to go to the Stroke menu. And before we select an alpha, I want to go over three different stroke types that we have. We have dot, we have grab radius, which is scaling it out. And then we have a uh, grab dynamic intensity. Um, and that's basically when you're using the intensity one, that is how much pressure you're putting on and how drastic or, um, uh, strong the effect of the alpha is on there but for radius I prefer to use that because that's allowing you to scale at one intensity um, so it gives you a little bit more control when you need to or when you want to so now we're gonna go into the alpha section just like everything else we're gonna hit the plus icon import it and it should import in a few seconds if not you might have to close out the menu and come back in and there we go okay so it, it popped off so if you can tell right now, I'm using the grab stroke option, but with the dynamic intensity on. So I can't really scale the alpha as big as I need it, but it's allowing me to um, give a certain intensity to the effect. Again, I prefer to use the grab um, radius or dynamic radius, and that allows me to actually scale the alpha map uh, as big or small that I need it on the model. Um, and again, this allows you, you just need to adjust the intensity bar um, on the left hand side and that'll allow you to soften the effect or make the effect harsher. But I think with the alphas after getting your base sculpt down, alpha maps or any images like that can give a lot of detail and nice, uh, give a nice touch uh, to your model once you're done with all the base shapes and main details that you need that can be hand sculpted and this just kind of gives it that extra little subtle subtle touch on it to you know do skin or you know embroidery or patterns like that um, alphas are a very very powerful tool but other than that guys um, that's pretty much it for this video i hope this helps i know a lot of these like i said this is more towards the beginner level of somebody using nomad sculpt so i'm not trying to make it too complex or talk too much into detail about each part i just want to let everybody know who is a beginner and uh, make them aware of some of the utilities and um, awesome features that Nomad Sculpt has in it. But uh, I will talk to you guys next time. Let me know if you enjoyed this video. Peace.